There have been killer nurses that have been featured on the podcast, like Jane Topin and Janine Jones. They are called Angels of Death. A third is Kristen Gilbert. She would murder numerous military veterans before calling in a bomb threat at the military hospital. Even now, criminal profilers are studying her to understand why she did what she did, being that she seems to have had a normal upbringing without any traumatic experiences. Was she born evil then? A bad seed? Let's explore Kristen Gilbert, and maybe you can figure out why she decided to become a serial killer. On November 15, 1967, in Falls River, Massachusetts, Kristen Heather Strickland was born to Richard Strickland, who was the U.S. Coast Guard, and Claudia Strickland. Her father, Richard, would leave the U.S. Coast Guard and settle into a career as an electronics engineer. Claudia worked as a substitute teacher. When Kristen was seven years old, her sister Tara was born. This caused Kristen to start spending more time with her grandmother. Kristen was known as a pathological liar by her friends and neighbors. She once told people that she was a distant relative of Lizzie Borden, who is known for murdering her father and stepmother with an ax. Lizzie was also from Falls River, so this might be why Kristen used her in her lies. She also lied about her parents. Kristen told some friends that her mother was a drunk who beat her. One friend, Pamela Smetzhurt, told a newspaper that people found Kristen strange. She told them about a time that they were watching General Hospital. We used to sit and watch General Hospital, and this sounds freaky and almost made up now, but there was this one character in the show who was this evil nurse, and I remember Kristen said, I like Amy, and I said, oh my god, why would you like Amy? And she said, I just like Amy. Ex-boyfriend said she was verbally and physically abusive towards them. Kristen would threaten them to commit suicide. If they didn't want to continue the relationship, she would damage their cars and call, heavily breathe on the phone, and then hang up. Kristen was smart and even graduated high school a year and a half earlier than expected and started a pre-med program in her state college, Bridgewater State College. Kristen also got a job as a home health aide with the Nurse Association. She was accused of scalding a disabled child with hot water that resulted in 60% burns all over his body. Even after doing this, Kristen was not prosecuted. She would meet her future husband, Glenn Gilbert, in 1986, and by 1987, she had transferred colleges to be near him. A year later, in 1988, Kristen and Glenn got married. Kristen was similar to Catherine Knight, who was featured in a previous podcast episode. They both were emotionally and physically abusive towards the men they were in relationships with, even their husbands. A month after Kristen married Glenn, she almost killed him when she chased him around the house with a knife after an argument. Glenn was able to lock himself in a room and wait it out. Kristen graduated from college and became a nurse. And on March 6, 1989, she started working at the Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center, or VAMC for short. In a year, Kristen was featured on the April 1990 copy of the VA Practitioner. It makes you wonder how she was able to get on the cover when around her, many of her patients were dying. Kristen was at the VAMC for seven years. The time she was there, half of the 350 deaths that occurred happened when she was on duty. A doctor started noticing a pattern and told Kristen's nursing manager, Melody Turner, Similar to Janine Jones, another killer nurse, nothing was done, and so Kristen was able to continue killing. The nurses even jokingly called her an angel of death. Even then, no one took the joke seriously. In late 1990, Kristen gave birth to her first son. Kristen would return back to the VAMC after maternity leave in spring 1991. The deaths continued. In 1993, Kristen's second son was born. By 1995, Kristen and Glenn's marriage started deteriorating and they were constantly arguing. One of the deaths was of 66-year-old Stanley Jekodowski. He came into VMC in late July 1995. Everything seemed fine until Kristen came on duty. 
A nurse saw Kristen go into Stanley's room with a syringe. His medication were all pills, so the nurse found that weird. The nurse then heard Stanley exclaim, Ow, it hurts, you're killing me. A few minutes later, Stanley was going into cardiac arrest and passed away. It was also in the summer of 1995 when Kristen became friendly with a police officer at the VMC named James Perrault. By the fall, the two were having an affair. We have to remember that Kristen was still married to Glenn Gilbert. Kristen started cooking more and more and Glenn started saying the food was tasting funny. Investigators suspect that she was poisoning her husband. In November 1995, Glenn got really sick and had to be rushed to the emergency room. He recovered. Later, Kristen took out two syringes and told Glenn that she was going to flush his vein out to draw blood. She's a nurse and his wife, so Glenn wasn't suspicious. When the syringe went in, Glenn felt cold. He tried to pull away, but she pinned him against the wall with her hip, and he passed out. When he came to, Glenn heard Kristen say, this is not going to work. Glenn got lucky. James Peralt gave Kristen an ultimatum. It's either me or your husband. This caused Kristen to ask for the divorce. Glenn would escape with his life. On December 8, 1995, veteran Henry Hudon came into the VMC. He had taken 50 pills and drank a 12-pack of beer. When his family was leaving him at the ER to be monitored, his sister remembered Henry screaming, You can't leave me here. You can't leave me in this building. People are dying around here for no reason. Kristen came on duty, and Henry would never leave the hospital. The angel of death's jokes finally started being taken seriously and the nurses started becoming more and more suspicious of Kristen Gilbert and in February 1996, the Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center launched an investigation because of the deaths. Kristen was not happy about the investigation and she even told her ex-husband that he better not speak to the investigators. In July 1996, Jane Perrault tried to end the relationship, but Kristen begged him not to. He tried again a month later, but to no avail. In September 1996, James told her that he had agreed to speak to the investigators. Kristen Gilbert got very upset and told him not to. After that, she started to harass James. On the day he was going to speak to the investigators, Kristen tried blocking his car with hers. He said he was going to, and she got in the car and drove off. It didn't end there. She started stalking him. Kristen threw eggs at his car, spray painted the windshield, and keyed the car. We remember that when she was an adolescent, she used to verbally and physically abuse her boyfriend, so it seems like she continued to do so. Kristen started calling his house, and when James would pick up, he would just hear heavy breathing. This is when someone could just press star 67 to hide their number. He decided to contact NYNEX, and they were able to trace seven of those phone calls to Kristen Gilbert. For those who don't know, NYNEX was the telephone company that was bought by Bell Atlantic Corporation on August 14, 1997. On September 26, 1996, Kristen made a bomb threat to the VAMC. She used a handheld voice changer called Talk Girl Jr. so that she could mask her voice. On September 30th, Kristen told a neighbor how she found a bomb recipe and it was easy to make. That same day, she bought a Talk Boy Jr. that is similar to the Talk Girl she had bought before. The cashier remembered how Kristen wanted to make sure the batteries worked. Kristen called James Peralt with the Talk Boy Jr. and said, Officer Peralt, I've been watching you, boy. On October 1st, 1996, a search warrant led police to search Kristen's apartment. The police seized batteries in the Talk Boy Jr. and they also found a newspaper article about the bomb threat. Her attempts to stop the investigation on the murders and try to hide the fact that she was making the bomb threat didn't work. She was found guilty for the bomb threat and sentenced to 15 months in prison and three years of supervised release. Before calling in the bomb threat, she called her ex-husband using the Talk Girl Jr. and on Glenn's answer machine, she left the following message. I just wanted to say goodbye for the last time. Goodbye. The investigation would end and Kristen Gilbert would go on trial for the murders of Stanley Jagodowski, Henry Hudon, Kenny Cutting, and Ed Squira. On March 27, 
2001, a judge sentenced Kristen Gilbert to four consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole, plus 20 years. She tried appealing, but in 2003, she dropped it. Why? The Supreme Court had ruled that in a retrial, prosecutors could pursue the death sentence. Kristen Gilbert was only charged with four deaths, but it's obvious that she killed many more. Veterans who had survived war and post-traumatic stress had to die at the hands of a serial killer. As with others, lives could have been saved if people would have reacted earlier. When that doctor raises suspicions with the nurse manager, if she would have acted, that would have been a chance. If instead of making fun of the many deaths happening on her watch, the nurses would have acted, then maybe that would have been another chance. However, we have to remember that people never think horrid actions like Kristen Gilbert's can happen around them. So maybe that's why they laughed it off. She isn't like other female killers who had traumatic childhood, so it is interesting that Kristen became the killer nurse that she became. At least she is spending the rest of her life in prison in Texas. Actually, four life sentences. Thank you again for joining me and learning more about another female killer. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you again and I'll talk to you next week.